there you go. Um, and we're also going to live stream it um, to um, YouTube. And then so it'll be recorded on the Friends YouTube channel. If anyone wants to go and um, look at it later, you, you can. Um, all right, now I'm coming back. Um, okay, so recording. And um, the, the first thing I would like to do well, is introduce myself. I'm Katie Fleming. I'm the Community Engagement Director at Friends of the San Juans. And I'll tell you a little bit more about me and what I do and my connection with the students here in just a second. But I would like to start with a land acknowledgement um, before anything else happens. So Friends of the San Juans respectfully acknowledges and honors the fact that this beautiful place we call home is compromised of the ancestral lands waters and natural resources of the Coast Salish peoples. The Coast Salish peoples have cared for and stewarded the San Juan Islands and the Salish Sea since time immemorial and continue to do so. And we honor their inherent Aboriginal and treaty rights that have been passed down from generation to generation. Okay, so I am really excited about tonight. Like Steve said in the chat, he, where all of us have been, I would imagine you're here, most all of you are here because you've been interested in this topic and it is not an easy topic to learn about and research. And um, Linnea and Ella did an excellent job this past year looking at our waste, our landfill waste, our recycling waste, um, how it's taken care of, where it goes. Um, and I can't, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, well, we'll get to that in a minute that most of you read their article, but um, that was in the paper as well that, that chronicled their research. But if not, this will be a great summary tonight and a great opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, so I, my job at Friends is exactly what it sounds like. It's to engage the community in our mission, which is to um, protect and restore the San Juan Islands and the Salish Sea for people in nature. We do that in a variety of different ways, but I have to say that my favorite way um, as, as that person that gets to get out there with a bunch of people, um, and no offense to the older folks who I love too, but I love working with students and it's my passion. And I have been so honored the past five years to know these two. They just graduated from Spring Street International School. I trying to try not to cry when I talk about them going away to college because it's awesome that they're doing that, but they've been so great in our community too. And I have a feeling, you know, we'll see them at least, you know, here and there, but um, you all have done wonderful work. You've, you know, Sharon Massey's class and her, and her science projects and all of that. You've been great students in those classes that we've been a part of, but you've gone above and beyond what you've been asked to do in class two um, for your school and for the environment and for the community. So I am just, like I said, it's, it's the most inspiring thing I get to do is work with people like you. And um, having said that, that's my, that's my introduction. That's about the last I'll say until we get to the questions and answers here at the end. Um, but yeah, we're all really excited to hear about this latest research. And even I, in the beginning of the year, asked them, you know, are you sure you want to do this? This is going to be this is going to be really hard and it's going to be really frustrating. And they'll tell you all about that. But but what you accomplished was is pretty, pretty amazing. So um, the the first the first thing I want to do is um, well, ask how many of you read Ella's article. And I'm going to put we're going to do a few polls tonight, and we're just curious how many of you um, have seen what they what they wrote. And like I said, if you have it, that's okay. They're gonna review it. Um, and also, like I said, the, use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen to ask questions and I will field those for Ella and Linnea at the end. So at that, I will hand it over to you two. Thank you both so much. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, let me just get our presentation pulled up. Hey, and um, if you guys had any questions, Okay, so I'm Linnea, my fellow presenter is Ella. Um, yeah, I'm, I live on Orcas, she lives on San Juan. Like Katie said, we just graduated. And yeah, what we'll be talking about tonight is like our year long journey of investigating, you know, meetings, phone calls, tours of different places, all kind of a big, uh, yeah, culmination of that. 
And if you want more information than what we talked about tonight, you can read Ella's article. It's in the Sounder, in the journal, all of that. So yeah, so our journey. Um, it didn't really start this year. This uh, passion of environmental protection has been one that Ellen and I have had for a while. Um, it started back in seventh grade when we noticed the way that our school dealt with trash and recycling, which was basically just to use both bins as trash and call that good enough. Um, so in seventh grade, Ellen and I were like, what can we do? And we basically decided uh, to make these bin covers that you can see in the photo there that said stop. And then we would put what you could recycle or what should be thrown away in that bin. And we were like, perfect, this will uh, solve the question, solve the problem. Um, and basically it didn't. <laughs> uh, like two weeks later, we found these lids scattered all over our campus and the system had returned to what it was. So we were kind of disheartened by that and we moved on. In eighth grade, we met Katie and she helped us go to this climate change uh, training program with Al Gore in Seattle, which was super cool. We learned a lot, we're reinvigorated to keep pursuing this passion. Um, so we did different types of projects and then senior year rolled around and we were like, okay, this is it. We're gonna figure out how to do the waste system at our school correctly and like leave a functional system for our future, uh, for future classes. So basically what we did is we removed all the trash cans and recycling from the different rooms and made this one big sorting station, as you can see in the picture there, um, and made people sort everything. We had posters, we gave presentations, and we just really tried to change their whole mindset around recycling and trash. And it seemed to work pretty well. Um, and so that kind of led to step two. Uh, Katie and Jess, both from Friends of the San Juan, came in like halfway through the year and talked to us about their careers and encouraged us to dig deeper into our interests. And Ella and I had already had this successful waste program thing at the school, but we realized that once we put this nicely sorted recycling into our bin, we really had no idea what happened next. So we decided to take on that step of where does everything go after it leaves our campus? Um, and that's kind of what led to the article, this presentation and all of that. Um, we just have some general terms here uh, that will come up in the presentation. So basically there are transfer stations, which are sites where recyclables or trash are collected and sorted. And there are three of those in the San Juans. We have Orcas Recycling Services, San Juans Transfer Station, Lopez Solid Waste Disposal District. And that is different from haulers. Um, haulers are a person or entity who's uh, collecting and transporting that waste. And we have San Juan Sanitation, which does all the islands, and then Friday Harbor Refuse and Recycling Services, which services the town. So those will come up later in the presentation. Ella. Yeah, so we did some other research just about recycling and waste in general. So I found this interesting graph and it basically gives a nice um, curve to show how our waste has increased from 1960 until 2018. So paper and cardboard products have made up the largest percentage of waste materials since the 1960s, although that is declining because of our online media and the decline of newsprint since around the 2000s, but it will be expected to continue because we do use a lot of paper products still. Thus, next, um, oh, not the next slide, Linnea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, the next uh, fourth largest uh, material is food waste which is really unfortunate because there's so much we can do with food waste. We'll get into that with solutions later. 
And the next one is yard trimmings, which have been declining since the 1990s due to the state legislation of yard trimming disposal that has been banned from landfills pretty much depends on the state a little bit and how like grass clippings were encouraged to be left on your lawn, things like that. And plastic products since, uh, or in 2018, generated about 12% of the total waste and has, uh, it grew from 8.2% in the 90s. So next slide, Lene. In 1960, people were generating about 2.6 pounds of trash per day, and that has risen to 4.9 pounds per day in 2018. So that is more than double the consumption, but we are not even double the population since 1960, which is incredible to think about. And although the it's hard to estimate because it's not an exact science and we are being becoming more conscientious, the World Bank does estimate that um, gen net generation of MSW to increase by 70% by 2050. So basically, if we increase by these rates, we will have no place to put all of our waste. The landfills will be completely maxed out. So next we'll give you a quick overview of the waste facilities we have on the islands. This is Salmon Transfer Station on Salmon Island. It's located on Sutton Road just outside of town, but the town does own the land and they lease it to the county who contracts it to Lautenbach Industries, which is based in Mount Vernon. And if I'm not mistaken, we have either Paula or Troy representing them today. Um, and so if you live inside the town limits, the town of Friday Harbor has trucks which do curbside pickup and San Juan Sanitation does the commercial recycling pickups inside town because the town does not have the infrastructure to do that. And then the garbage is taken to San Juan Transfer Station. And then from there goes the 233 miles to Cowlitz County Landfill over the ferry and in some trucks and on a train. The recycling goes 111 miles to Recology, which is in Seattle. And if you live outside of town, then you either self-haul or San Juan Sanitation picks up your recycling and garbage and the garbage goes to San Juan Transfer Station. Next we have Orcus, ORS. They are on county owned land, but funded by the profits earned by the business. And so individuals and businesses alike self haul to ORS where they can separate certain items or commingle and each are sold to different buyers. For example, aluminum cans, cardboard and um, steel are separated out specifically and sent to Skagit River and Steel Recycling, or Skagit River Steel and Recycling, sorry. And the commingled recycling is sent to Recology in Seattle. Um, so if you self haul garbage and uh, or get it picked up by San Juan Sanitation, it goes to Republic Services in Roosevelt, Washington which is 327 miles away. And it should be noted that the exchange is the thrift store that's located on Horace's property, which is one of their, the steps that they've taken towards their zero waste goal. And this summer they are um, building a glass crusher and a baler, which are being implemented as we, as we speak. 
All right, we have next Lopez Solid Waste Disposal District is unique in that it's a tax district, meaning that everything is paid through the property taxes and it's all run by volunteers. There is only self-hauling and everything is separated. Besides whoever um, on Lopez gets curbside pickup, which is done by San Juan Sanitation. Um, there are many different destinations for each of the separated materials, but the big group items like plastic, cardboard, and aluminum go to Skagit River Steel, River Steel and Recycling. I don't know why that's such a mouthful. <laughs> um, it's all bailed, so it's cheaper, more efficient, and more sustainable because it's compact for transport. And the garbage that is dropped off at um, Lopez is transferred through Skagit County Transfer Station before going to Republic Services. Lopez is um, also unique because of their amazing thrift store, which is free, and other programs such as the Remakery aimed at reducing and reusing materials and their partnership with Lopez Sand and Gravel, which is another big program that allows them to repurpose glass and fill the gravel pit instead of the landfill. And last but not least, we have San Juan Sanitation, which is located on Orcas and does all of the outside of city limit pickups and curbside pickups for large um, businesses, as well as the um, Outer Islands arrange different pickups with them, depending on what their community wanted. For example, um, Shaw, they didn't want to pay for like individual trucks to go out with recycling. So sanitation has bins that they leave for them to collect it in one place and then that they haul off when they're full. So when um, picking up garbage on San Juan, San Juan sanitation goes to the transfer station. On Orcas, they put the garbage at ORS and on Lopez, the garbage that they pick up also goes to ORS. But the recycling that they pick up um, on all of the islands goes to Woodenville's waste management plant. So not Recology or Skagit River steel and recycling. They're also different from Lopez and Orcas um, because they're regulated by the state and only allowed to make up to 7% profit because the state wanted to make waste management more fair and regulate the monopolies. So everybody can have access to recycling and garbage equally. And in our case, the islands make it more expensive due to the transportation costs and the um, limited access to some of the outer islands. So it does increase the price, but the state still regulates the balance of garbage and recycling prices. Um, so the garbage price does subsidize recycling. So I think some of you have seen this flow chart. I think Katie was gonna put a link in the chat so you could see it a little bit bigger on your screens. Um, I depicted most of kind of basics on what's going on here. Um, I think another thing to point out is that the garbage uh, from the recycling, as in the recycling that is contaminated, that recology, which is an MRF, a material um, MR. Uh, Luna, help me out. Recovery facility, there you go. Material recovery facility. Um, the garbage that is contaminated, recycling, goes to Cowlitz County Landfill from Recology. So after it comes from the islands, it takes even further trip. 
So yeah, we can answer questions about that later, but we have some history to share with you. Just a brief overview of what happened because I am betting most of you or some of you at least lived on the island when the county owned and ran the transfer stations or ran the transfer stations. So back in 2011, the county was in debt in their solid waste program. So they put it in the ballot to vote on whether or not they wanted, the town wanted, or the citizens wanted a tax levy, but it didn't pass. So the county put the contract for operation, operating the transfer stations to a bid and the exchange took over or us, the lot and box took over the transfer station and Lopez did choose to do a tax levy and have their facility run by volunteers. Fun fact, while they were brainstorming what to do about the debt, there was talk about an incinerator. Um, there are some companies in Europe that incinerate all their garbage. And so they were gonna come and see how it, that would work here, which shocked both Lene and I. Um, so I guess we had just have a poll here. What do you guys think about an incinerator on, on the islands? First glance. I know that um, Duncan, who works for the town, told us if we were to have an incinerator, you would have to get all of the garbage from all of the islands. And even still, we wouldn't have enough to keep it running because you need to have it running 24 seven. So it's pretty crazy. I mean, we did not do much research on it. It seems like a good idea in theory, but hard to tell. At least that's our opinion. I'll let you guys answer poll for a second. All right, next slide, Lene. So I'm sure most of you heard about the um, the China Sword in 2017, where China stopped accepting our uh, recyclables. And that was because 30% of what we were sending to China was put in the landfills. It was contaminated beyond any sort of separation that they could do. So they just flat out banned recycling from most places in the US. And that led to big repercussions because the US doesn't have many facilities to sort or recycle materials. So they had to rent huge storage facilities to temporarily store recyclables before they could find new buyers. And they were kind of scrambling because they didn't have enough space. I don't know if you remember, but we didn't ever stop recycling. It was still being sent somewhere. We just didn't know where. So now they have different buyers, but it's still kind of a shady business because the buyers that send it abroad in some cases, in some materials, um, they're not required by the government to tell anybody where they're sending their materials. They are just required to say that they are being recycled. So that is pretty interesting to me. Kind of scary, but at least we can hope that they are doing their best and we can also do our best on this end. Lene, take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, well, currently 
the county says that ones, twos, and fives have a small amount of value when recycled. Um, this means like small compared to like a can, which has a lot of value, but like they have some, but ideally reduce the amount of waste. Um, and that brings us to the solution, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, one thing that Ella and I are trying to do is just educate because as you can see, every place has a slightly different like set of rules that apply to them. So try to learn based on where you live, where your stuff goes, because that'll help you recycle properly and share that information when you can, because that helps a lot. And then ideally just reducing how much waste we produce, which is why we wanted to do this presentation now um, with this being the first day of Plastic Free July. Um, one big thing you can do for sure is trying to reduce plastic. And there are lots of ways to, to do that, buying in bulk, reusable mugs and bags, reducing packaging. Um, the, there's a great resource, which is Plastic Free Salish Sea. Uh, the website's there. Uh, they have lots of ways, lots of information and lots of solutions. So that's awesome. Um, and then we just have a few polls, a few more polls for you guys, because we were just curious what you guys thought about a couple of these questions that we came across. So yeah, what do you think is the biggest hindrance to a zero waste goal? And we just came up with some of the things that we think hinders that, um, but if you have a different one, let us know. And then is it possible to get there? I guess Lene and I can talk a little bit about what we've heard from the people and what we've learned from the managers of the different waste facilities. They are very different in the way they manage. And that's just because it's really hard to know what is best to do because there are so many different ways to send off your recycling. And in many ways, the system has just designed it to be out of sight, out of mind. So the biggest thing we can do is to put it straight in view so we know what we're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and like Ella said, this is one that people have lots of different views on. And another thing that we came across that we've heard lots of different takes on is commingling, recycling versus separating your recycling. So we have a poll because we're curious which you all think is the better method. And if any of you um, I think you can see the results of the poll. If you wanted to ask questions about that or have us read out the results or talk about that, just comment below. You can pull those back up. Awesome. Looks like almost everyone's voted. Um, okay. And then because like I was saying, this is the first day of Plastic Free July. We were just hoping everyone could put in the chat something, it can be, you know, big, small, whatever that you pledge to do for Plastic Free July. I can tell you something that I'm doing. What are you doing, Ella? I am trying to bring a reusable water bottle and bag and straw and utensil everywhere I go, just in case, you know, you get hungry when you're walking in town or thirsty, can't use those plastic cups. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, and what's super cool is the county actually passed a proclamation about this. And I think that'll probably be talked about a little more but a proclamation just 
trying to encourage businesses and citizens and everyone just to try to reduce their plastic when possible. Um, yeah, and I think we're going to go to questions now. Great. Thanks, you two, so much. Um, yeah, and now it's time. If you have a question, go ahead. The Q&A box is at the bottom of your screen. Um, and um, you can go ahead and type in your, your questions, and I will read them to Ella and Linnea. Um, but it's also fun, as you know, we're doing that to look in the chat and see what folks are saying um, about, you know, what they're, what they're up to this month. So don't be shy. And, and if you aren't going to share tonight and you're a social media person, um, tag it this month on Facebook or Instagram, SJC, Plastic Free July, um, hashtag, and we'll search for them later and be able to share them and see them and be inspired by them. So a good positive way to use social media. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So the first question here is from Tina. Um, what not? I my, my, was going through my head too. So what do you think is the best way to recycle, commingled or separated? From what you learned. Well, <laughs> I do think there's merit to both options because, for example, commingling makes things easier obviously, and if you do it correctly, it has the potential to be clean and sustainable, even though it takes a little more effort for uh, material recover facilities to separate everything. So it adds another step, which potentially does affect its overall like recycling as a whole sustainability because recycling, you do have to balance the cause, cost and effect of just how much you're putting into recycling because it does have emissions and how much you are actually saving. So in that way, I like the idea of separation because I think that it's a cleaner stream. And if you have companies taking responsibility for the materials that they're creating and recycling those, you just, it's, easier to get it right from the source and send it there as well. That's one take on it, Planea. Any comments? Yeah, I mean, I think what Ellen and I found interesting is we both went in thinking like separated or bust basically. And I think we heard some of the more practical arguments for commingling, which we thought were interesting. We basically decided at our school, even though at the end, our recycling gets commingled, that for people to learn, uh, like to really get that recycling ingrained in them, they had to take the time to be like, this is a can, I'm gonna put it here, I have to wash out my container. And we just found that separating was the best way to remove trash from recycling and just make people pause for longer. But yeah, I think Ella said it well, there's, you know, you can weigh both options. And that just a follow up it, that she asked, is it possible to set up both? Does ORS have both? Anyway, what do you know about that? I think they do. Yeah, so ORS, as far as I know, is on the trajectory to becoming sort of like, or more like Lopez and separating everything. But it's kind of a slow process because you do need to educate your community. So they are separating um, basic items right now that once they get their baler running that they can bail and send to Skagit Steel and Recycling or Skagit River Steel and Recycling. So that's cardboard, aluminum, steel, and well on the side that is sent to other places they do batteries, oil, paint, electronics, um, linea. There's other stuff I believe that I don't have the tip of my tongue. You got lots of it. Um, but I think it is possible to do both. And I think you might end up having to do both just because we are a unique community of islands and we do have a limited space. Like I know that the problem with curbside pickup of separated items is that the trucks that have the different compartments are not sustainable um, and they don't work as well in the islands. Um, so that makes things a little bit more complicated. 
And I understand that everybody can't self haul. So thinking of um, everybody, there does need to be commingling, at least at this point in our system. But I do think it's possible to also have the option of separating and self hauling if we do have that education proponent. Okay, and the, the next two um, from Janet and Logan are, are pretty related. Um, <clears throat> Janet says, do you think packaging producer responsibility will ever happen? And so a better design to make recycling better. And then the follow on of that is what are your thoughts on product stewardship? So pretty, pretty related there. Well, I want to start. I mean, I can. Um, yeah, I think we found like some product stewardship programs that uh, the different waste management facilities here were taking part in. And yeah, I think personally, that's like a huge one, a huge way to make recycling better is if we can push for companies to take more responsibility uh, for their packaging and like have it come full circle and for them to be like, yes, this is the container we're using um, and we're gonna follow it all the way and make sure it has a sustainable journey I think that would be huge. Um, will it ever happen? I hope so. I don't know. I think some companies will be happy to do it and others it might take, you know, more of our pushing to get there, but hopefully. Yeah, I mean, two things come to mind when you say that. Um, one, we've learned from Logan that some big, was it Coca-Cola or big beverage company has um, the state passed a law saying that they need to have more product stewardship. I don't know very much information about that, but it's coming <laughs> along. Um, I know that Duncan from the town was telling us about the pilot project that Friday Harbor is a part of. Um, the company, I don't remember the name of, but it's a big family company I think that- S.C. Johnson. S.C. Johnson, it owns Ziploc and a bunch of uh, Windex companies like that, that have plastic products. And so they are going to provide people who live in town with bins where we're only supposed to put stretchy plastics and those will be recycled into plastic pellets, which then will become a variety of different materials. But that's instead of um, having to take oil out of the ground to make new plastic pellets. And which is, it's cool because normally plastic bags and that kind of plastic is not recyclable because it jams up the sorting machines. And I just have one quick thing to share too that I found inspiring. And that's re there's some research being funded at the Vancouver Aquarium to study the microfibers coming off of clothes um, and washing machines, which are a huge issue in the environment at this point. And it's funded by like Arcteryx and Mountain Equipment Co-op and um, uh, Patagonia, you know, the outdoor companies that are, they don't, they want to do the right thing and they don't want their products to be, um, you know, polluting the environment. So there are good stories like that out there. But I, yeah, and I think the other thing to keep your, everyone's eyes on are, are, is the legislation, you know, legislation in Washington state, there are often, um, there, there's often legislation that's being tried, you know, we're trying to move through on the state level that deals with all of that too. So keep your eyes open during legislative sessions um, statewide too. All right, you ready for the next one? Um, okay, so is glass the most recyclable and economically efficient material we toss out? So as far as we have learned, glass does not get recycled in Washington as long where it's taken to either um, waste management, Woodenville or Recology. And it is only recycled right now on Lopez because of their arrangement uh, with the DOE reclamation program with Lopez sand and gravel, which crushes all of the glass and sends it to their gravel pit, which obviously in 
many years will not work because the gravel pit is not unlimited space. Um, but Orcus is getting a glass crusher as well. And according to what Pete has told us, all of the glass that Orcus crushes, and even if the county can organize to get glass from all of the islands, that will still not be enough sand for all of the construction companies. They'll still be importing sand. So at least we can be net zero for glass waste eventually. Um, right now in terms of the recycling, I would say aluminum is the most sustainable and profitable recyclable. Okay, Linnea, did you wanna add anything? Pretty good. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, and I know the Port of Friday Harbor is also exploring um, what to do with some of their properties. And they've, I mean, mentioned at least, just said the words glass crusher. I don't know how far it's gone, but these again are ways to get involved in the community to keep, our, keep well, you know, a lot of you are on the friends email list and I'll definitely keep you posted when there are opportunities to comment on those things. But um, yeah, keep your eyes open for sure. All right. Um, are there curriculum set up for schools to use to educate the next generation? Uh, we were just talking about this, like when we last met, how awesome it would be for there to be like even half a school year, you know, some class dedicated to uh, studying like the waste system and how it works, because it's definitely not something that people usually learn about. Um, we don't have a curriculum set up, but I know Katie is trying to do more work with kids and would talk about this and Nikita Palmasani from the Lopez Solid Waste Disposal District uh, teaches kids a lot about like what they're doing on Lopez. So there are people who are doing it. Um, and we were thinking it would be a really cool club or elective even, if we could figure out how to do that kind of thing um, for people who wanted to learn about it, but no curriculum currently, but we think it would be super cool. Although I wanna push back a little bit on that and she's not on tonight, but Sharon Massey is a great example at Spring Street who you know brings in all of these things whenever she gets a chance. Um, you know, so there are, and there are teachers like that at, you know, at the public schools too on all the islands that we've, you know, I've gotten to work with that it might not be an official curriculum, but I can tell you that there are teachers who are working with their students on these things, but it would be great um, to do more. And I know they would appreciate more outside support too. So yeah, we are looking into that. All right. Um, and then here's a good one. Is it is it possible that people will change their habits and adopt sustainable fashion? Hola, Alicia. She's my friend from Peru. Um, I think that it's very possible to change your habits. I know that just learning about recycling has changed my habits because I thought that my family recycled as well as we could, but it turns out that there are still things that we wish cycle, meaning that we believe it's recyclable because it's on a list somewhere, doesn't mean that it's recyclable here. And I think plastic is a big one of those things, but just all of you being here is one step closer to becoming more sustainable yourself and therefore making your community more sustainable. Lene, did you want to add anything? I think Good. she's got it. Yeah. So too, yeah. Okay, what should we avoid buying and using? I mean, I would say the biggest thing to avoid buying is like anything single use, anything that you're gonna have to throw away immediately after using it. Um, I mean, and like it's hard, especially with COVID. Um, I think places are only now like taking reusable cups and containers and things again, but yeah, any of that, like things that you're gonna just throw away immediately are great to avoid. Um, 
I know everything in the store has like lots of packaging, but buying in bulk when possible to try to avoid all that plastic packaging is great. Yeah, I think all that single use plastic that we just throw away immediately is probably the biggest thing to avoid. Okay. Um, what do you two think are the three highest priority changes we can push for locally to reduce and reuse the waste stream in the near term? I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I think that compost is one of the big things that we need to look at in the near future because food waste is such a high percentage of our total um, MSW, material solid waste, that goes into our landfills unnecessarily. So just making sure, and I mean, a lot of us, I would say all of us because of the ratio of people know somebody who has pigs or chickens and it's so easy to have them take any extra food that you wanna feed the animals or people who have compost that don't fill it all the way or starting your own compost. Even if you don't live on a farm in your backyard, it's pretty simple to have a small compost. I know that you don't always, you're not always able to throw everything in your compost, but just most of your vegetable scraps, that's a big change. And it takes a lot of waste out of the garbage stream. So I'd say that's number one for me. What about you, Lenny? Um, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I would say, I mean, I don't know if this counts, but like more education. We were talking also a lot about tourism and how we kind of say when the tourists come to our islands, they'll just, you know, like if we make a too complicated system, then they just won't understand it. But I think if we could like push them a little bit and try to, um, you know, up the ante of our recycling and just tell people like when they come to this beautiful, pristine place, uh, this is how we recycle and uh, just try to, you know, have some faith that they'll figure it out, I think would be a big one. Um, but that might be hard. We'll see. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. And this is from Paula and I, I think it'd be interesting to hear from her after this too. Paula is from Lautenbach. Um, but she wants to know, what did you find to be the biggest wish cycle items? Before we answer that, Katie, what do you think is priority for our county? Uh, well, the first thing that I think we could do sooner than later is a single use plastic ordinance. And as a member of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, um, I continue to push it through and it's not like it's not supported, it is. And I know that there, you know, the Mark Ingman, the Solid Waste Coordinator for the county is supportive. Every, most people are, but it's just needing to do a little bit more outreach to businesses seems to be the hang up. And so we need to do that. And I, I will say too that Christine Minnie, um, our, our San Juan County Council District, uh, is it district one? Well, you know who Christine is. She's incredibly supportive of a single use plastic ordinance as well. I think I can say that for her. Um, she, you know, they ran a restaurant here uh, that a lot of you had probably been to Ernie's on San Juan Island. And she did, they did everything that we're asking, rest, would ask restaurants to do in an ordinance. And so she's going to be a really good person to help do outreach to. So I think that we're moving forward pretty, I hope pretty quickly with something like that. Um, and again, keep your eyes and ears open for commenting opportunities to support something like that. And if you happen to know a business um, or you're a business owner yourself, you know, starting to kind of wrap your head around um, what it would look like, um, you know, what it would ask businesses to not have disposable utensils, disposable plates, like if you have the capacity to wash things, you wash them, you know, only offering um, things on demand, right, like a straw on demand, or if you're picking up take, take out, um, 
don't just automatically give the plastic utensils, you know, simple things like that, um, that really aren't, um, I hope will make a difference. So anyway, that's one. And then composting too, is another thing that I continue to push really hard for. And a lot of people are right now too, here in the islands. So those are my two things. Yep. And I hope that a lot of you will help us get engaged with all those things too, to make them happen quicker. Um, all right. So back to wish cycle. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I can name a few things off the top of my head that we definitely saw in the recycling at Spring Street. Um, coffee cups that were not rinsed out. And well, those can't be recycled anyways because they have a film lining on the inside. And if they are eco-friendly, if they're wax, they can be recycled or composted, but usually they have a plastic lining which makes them non-recyclable. Um, To-go containers are the same and plastic utensils. Yeah, any type of plastic. I feel like people kind of hope it's recyclable or at least the kids at our school did. Or yeah, throwing like dirty stuff in the recycling as if it would get cleaned later magically. We saw that one a lot too. Mm-hmm. Paula, is there anything else that you all get at Lautenbach? If you if so, if you have anything to add, raise your hand and I'll I'll let you talk. I won't put you on video and put you on the spot, but but I'm curious. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Here's Paula. All right. Okay. I think you should be able to talk, Paula. No. Oh, maybe not. Let's see. All right, you don't have to turn your video on. Is it gonna work? I don't know, maybe this isn't as streamlined as I thought it would to get people to be able to talk and, and come in here. Um, here she comes. Yeah, no pressure to turn that video on, Paul, if you don't want to. But definitely curious, yeah, if you have anything to add on any of this is one of the, um, yeah, the waste haulers. Yeah, pardon me, I'm in my car right now. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I just got the um, invitation for this. It was kind of last minute, so um, uh, so uh, apologies for that. Um, first, you guys did a great, great job. I'm so impressed um, with with both of your presentations. Um, on the wish cycling, I think you hit both of them. We get half full cans, you know, uh, containers of peanut butter, and people think, you know, yeah, they're going to magically get cleaned and um, Tetra packs anything that has multiple types of non uh, uh multiple types of materials on it you know if they have that that metallic lining on the inside and um and then that that cardboard wax on the outside um you know i think those especially i was surprised to find out that those couldn't be recycled um and then the education um county to county city to city everybody is different in what they can take in and I think if there was one thing that would be great to do would be to streamline those regulations because you go from one place to the next and you think you're doing the right thing and boom, you're not. Um, it makes it really difficult to ask consumers to be part of the process when we can't um, streamline education on it. So um, those, those are things that we see. Thanks for letting me pop in. But no, thank you for being willing to pop in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put you back on the on the other one here in a minute. But and does anyone else? Oh wait, there's a um, a little bit more here. Um, hang on a second. One second here. Let me get this back up. All yeah, right. for those of you who don't know, um, Paul is talking about Tetra packs, and those are anything from juice containers to milk cartons and like little juice boxes. Those all have different layers of plastic and aluminum and cardboard, which have to be recycled in a very special facility that we just don't have. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I think that where we're going now in this is if anybody has anything to share, you know, like 30 seconds, pretty quick, because we're running, we're running out of time here, but good things that are happening, right, in the islands. And um, some of some folks, um, I'm just looking to see who's on here. If you do, um, again, raise your hand, we can, or put it in the chat. Um, but, you know, we, 
like we said in the beginning, and like uh, Ellen and Leah mentioned, that this is kind of a frustrating, confusing thing. But we don't want that to take over because there are good things happening. And as we said, there are a lot, lot more things that do need to happen, but there are currently um, good, good things to share. So does anybody else um, if either you know, raise your hand or put it in the chat? And we can all look to see what folks are saying in the chat. Um, but let's see, yeah, Janet, um, I will get you up to a panelist and turn your video on or, or not if you, um, whatever you prefer, but here's, here's Janet. And briefly introduce yourself to Janet. You're muted right now. There you go. Um, I live on Orcas Island and I've been into this for a long time. Um, an author named Beth Terry wrote a book called Plastic Free in 2012, and I brought her to the islands and had her give lectures <laughs> about trying to go plastic free. Um, but also, I'm very interested in biochar to make biochar from our forest thinnings and our yard, our yard trimmings, and that will store carbon and it's a great soil amendment. And and also, you could capture the heat that's generated, turn it into electricity. Um, or I, I'm not sure how Alpaca wants to store the energy, but capture the heat and turn it into something <laughs> um, that you can store. So I, I'm excited about that. And the glass crusher, I've been really involved with that. And the um, Orcus, um, the Orcus excavating, or Orcus X, Orcus excavating next to Orcus recycling um, services says they'll buy all the crushed glass uh, to use in construction that's generated. And so that's it's great, like super great. They're right next door. <laughs> um, I'm super happy about that. Great. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Okay. And it looks like um, Bruce Robinson wants to get in here. So Bruce, I'm going to promote you to panel so you can share. Here comes Bruce. And Bruce, you're muted. Here we are. Here we are. All right. Um, hey. I just happened to be outside with my chickens while I'm listening to this. And um, let's see if I can turn this camera around. I don't see the button. Well, I'm going to turn it around. Here's my chickens doing some recycling for me. I, I just put this, this um, pen together yesterday. And I've thrown some compost that has worms in it and they're breaking it down for me. Plus there's a lot of food scraps in here. They're eating a little bit of that. Anyway, here's what it looks like. And there's the, there's the hens down there. And uh, I see this as being a win-win for them and for me because I get eggs that are gonna be richer and, and more nutritious and they're gonna get better food. So there's a little bit of what the girls were talking about. Yep. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, and, and Bruce is also part, um, well, Bruce, do you want to just give just a good, quick, um, the poultry collective, there's a way you're making it easier for people to get involved with chicken raising in the islands. Right, yeah, I'm part of Transition San Juan and we are um, making available to people that would like to incubate their own uh, eggs and have chickens at home. Uh, we have incubators and we have brooding plates that they can raise their chicks with. And uh, yeah, that's something if you're interested, go to uh, Transition SJI, Transition San Juan Island, and uh, there should be information for you there. Thank you, Bruce. All right, anybody else have something to share? And Logan just chatted, I want chickens, get them. Man, they're so fun. I was just outside with my chickens before I came. Really, it's like one of the most positive, especially with kids, um, positive, fun waste reduction things I'm doing right now. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Well, I, I will, um, oh, here we go, Logan, good. And yeah, I'm glad that Logan's here too. Logan, well, let's get you up here as a panelist. He, um, well, I'll let you introduce yourself, Logan. Are you there? Am yep. I there? Yep, we can you hear can't, you. You can't see me yet, can you? Oh, darn. We got you, I know, they, right? <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I, I could see me for a little while. Oh, here we go. Let's see if this helps us. 
Uh, hey! hey. <laughs> well, first of all, it's been such a pleasure to get to know both of you uh, in, in this, this endeavor. Um, you really reached out and, and into the community. You've learned so much. And uh, you're accurate with all of that I was listening to today and from my experience, just for, for introductory purposes. Uh, I started work, working for San Juan Sanitation when I was 14 years old. Um, <laughs> it's quite a few years ago. And now I've worked my way up as the manager of the collection company. And, and a lot of these ideals that we are uh, trying to, to, that are reaching for, you know, and, and the hard work of everybody from Lopez, um, Shaw Island, uh, certainly Troy, Tori Lautenbach and ORS. We have, we have a really good base group of people that are leading this industry in this, this county. And one of the things that um, I think that we're all struggling with is certainly as we've talked about uh, plastics and how that is impacting our environment. And um, the other that came to mind when, and I was, when we were listening, uh, my kids, now they've left, they saw that I was going to bring up the video, um, is hazardous waste in San Juan County and, and what you've learned about how we're dealing with that because the waters around the Salish Sea, um, they're so vital to, to our way of life um, and anything that would run off of the hillsides from any of our islands and into the water that would uh, endanger the life of the, the the habitats or, or any of the, the, the critters that are in the water, you know, that's a concern for me. And, and also, are we doing enough um, from your research to, to make sure to mitigate any impact that we have in terms of, of that type of waste, um, which is a little bit off topic from recyclable, um, but certainly it's, to, in my mind, it's, a, it's very significant, very important um, how we handle and how we address hazardous waste. Can you speak to that? I would say that the hazardous waste that we have heard about and learned about in terms of the hazardous waste pickups are really progressing. Like the paint care was really exciting to hear about that we can recycle all of our paint and our batteries and things that you are there really presently, but you don't really know what to do with them once you're done. Yeah. and everything in theory can be recycled and reused somehow <laughs> if That's we right. have the programs and the initiative to do it. So I th one thing that I don't know anything about that I'd be curious to research is agricultural waste and runoff because we are farms and we have a lot of sustainable farming, but I can't speak for all of the farms. So I find it, I would find it hard to believe that there isn't some sort of agricultural runoff or waste product that we aren't noticing yet, but might in the near future. Well, I have to tell you, I, I really believe in composting as an important uh, part of what we do out here as, as Islanders, as our population grows. I think it's going to be more and more important that we learn how to, to handle that and take advantage of this resource that is essentially being squandered by, by being taken to a landfill when we can use it right here at home. So we'll be working on that, I'm, I'm sure, within the months to come at the Solid Waste Advisory Committee level. But um, as a representative of San Juan Sanitation, I'm in support of composting and, and however we can we can provide that service to the community, um, I, I would stand behind that. Thank you. <laughs> we would, I would love to help any way I can outreach. Anything. And I want chickens, by yeah. the way, I, I'm not joking. Chickens, Jordan. You have to. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, we have a few more questions. You know, I, are Ellen and they, are you doing okay with questions? Um, yeah, and if anyone wants to drop off, go for it. But I actually do want to share one more thing before people do start to go. And those of you with questions will stick around a little bit longer. Um, but in the chat, I'm going to put a link 
to the um, proclamation that the county read at this past Tuesday's um, meeting that proclaimed July, a uh, plastic free July, it's on the county level. And, um, and it's great, but I also, like we said, there's a lot of action that we could take at a county level. So I also encourage um, as many of you as, as possible to contact the county council and let them know that you wanna see a plastics ordinance, let them know that you're, you know, what you're in support of and what you'd like to see the county council do. Cause I, I know that they wanna do more than just make a proclamation too. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty darn sure of that. So let's all get together and make it easier for them to have the support to do that. So that is in there too, if you wanna see what they, what they said. And Logan, I'll go ahead and put you back on the attendee um, attendee line over there. But thank you again for for being here as a as one of a, one of the people who deal with this stuff every day here. Okay. So another another question is: Do any recycling stations clean contaminated contributions? Do you all know? Um, not that I know of, at least. Uh, Recology, they separate everything. They have fancy machines like with lasers and cameras that pull out all of the contaminants, but they're and same with Lopez because they do separate everything. The volunteers help manage the contamination. Um, I mean, I can speak for our school project and we had a bin for dirty plastics which we hand washed when students didn't want to, but I don't think that's the level <laughs> you're asking about. So I would say no to my knowledge, Linnea. I don't know, but yeah, probably not. And I don't think so either. Yeah, that's one of the main things is really like, cause you see that's actually some of the most consistent outreach you see is clean your recyclables. Um, like, yeah. All right, another question. Um, do we have a county system to test waters and runoff? Do you all know? Katie, do you want to answer this? Like, I'm not, no, because I don't know the answer either. Uh, I don't know, Pina. I'll find out and let you know. I know that the conservation district used to have a program like that and I'm, um, I, yeah, but I, I don't know what's still going on. So I will, I'll find out and let you know. All right. Um, and then Steve, um, he's heard from knowledgeable locals that the use of plastic to bale hay and silage that is increasing is a single use plastic product and unrecyclable. Do you all know about that? Do you mean the plastic that goes around the hay bales? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have seen that and I actually, that's a really good point. I haven't thought about that before, but I assume, yeah, looking at it, it's not reusable. Um, and mm -hmm. I guess not recyclable because it is a stretchy kind of uh, film plastic, mm -hmm. but I don't know if there are any initiatives to stop using that or to recycle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Steve, I know there used to be agricultural plastic recycling programs, and I don't know what the current status of that is, but um, I will I will let you know um, if I can find anything out about that too. Okay, so any other questions or comments before we go? Again, got some good chat stuff going on here. If you want to take a look at that. Oh, wait, and Bruce has one more thing to add, I think. Um, let's see here. We'll put you, bring you up here, Bruce. Okay. okay, can you hear me? Yep. Um, I was just talking to Colleen Howe, who does um, haylage on the island, which is a plastic wrapped um, hay product. And she said that they were recycling theirs up to now and now they can't the the I forget the name of the company that was taking the plastic but they are no longer doing that so she's a little bit distressed by that um, but Colleen Howe has sort of been on the forefront of of doing haylage and that she might be a good contact person if you're looking to find out if that's still recyclable the, the wrapping thank you Bruce all right is that it? 
Anything else before we go? And then I think all of you know how to get in touch with me and I know how to get in touch with Ella and Linnea. So um, happy to you know answer any other follow-up questions. Um, do you all have any closing comments, Ella and Linnea? I was just gonna comment um, on Janet's comment. Uh, she's talked about compostable plastics, so plant-based plastics. Yes, that is a very good point because all of the restaurants or most of them do have compostable takeout material, but it can't be composted because we do not have a commercial compost. And if some of you have tried putting it in your compost at home, it doesn't compost because it's not hot enough. So that is a very good point. And if we did have a commercial compost, that would help make our restaurants more sustainable. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for coming. Like this really made our whole year's worth of different researching and working on this worth it to be able to share what we learned and everything. So thank you. And thanks you too. And again, for all, yeah, it, and tell, wait, do you want to tell people where you're going to college and what you're studying? Because it is so inspiring. Who wants to go first? I mean, I'm going to Whitman College in Walla Walla, and I don't know what I'm studying mm -hmm. yet, but something. Something. Okay. It'll be great. Yep. I'm going to Anglo-American University in Prague, and I'm going to study journalism. Awesome. Yep, and yeah, and the the um, story that most of you read that that's going to be probably history making. The first time Ella was in print, because I'm sure it will not be the last time by any means. So, uh, thank you all both so much, and again for all that you've done. I know you know we'll all we'll all see you still in the community, but um, yeah, this was this was great, and we'll yeah be thinking about this for a long time. And and for those of you on the call, you know have have hope and get involved. That's my, my final message. We need lots of voices talking about all the things that we mentioned tonight. So thank you for being here to listen to all that. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Katie. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks. All right. It's a good team. All right, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye.